Putin's dream is over, as Russian flanks and lines of defenses in Bakhmut completely collapse, and Ukrainians set to enter the city in the very near future. And trust me, this is the point of no return for Putin, because Russia already ran out of professional soldiers, using whoever they have left to protect significant points in Ukraine. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. And today we begin with our familiar battle babushkas. And in this episode they say that, hey, everyone should sell American dollar, because American economy is about to collapse and the US will announce def what, uh, deliot, uh, Johnny Depp but, ah, default. This is what they're gonna announce. They're gonna announce default soon. And to be honest, it is just my personal opinion. I see battle babushkas way more frequently right now as the Russian propagandists instead of Russian actual propagandists. Hmm, something is very interesting happening. But okay, speaking about some more Russian news infused with propaganda, according to the representative of the Russian government, Viktor Sobolev, he said that those Russian soldiers who will be joining Wagner will be considered as traitors and criminals, and they can be sent to jail for 15 years. But if you think about this, as soon as Wagner is once again allowed to recruit people from the prison, <laughs> so those Russian soldiers who could not join Wagner officially will be sent into jail, and this is where they will be recruited to Wagner now officially. <laughs> right. Next we have some statements by the representative of Russia to the United Nations, Vasily Nibenzia, and he said that Russia is not purposefully targeting civilian objects in Ukraine and Russia does not have a war with the civilian nation of Ukrainians. According to him, it is all the West which started this war and it will be just regular simple Ukrainians paying for all these military vehicles in the future. Well, it does sound familiar, so good luck, Mr. Nibenzia. But okay, let's go to the next news, and so one of the biggest allies of Putin, Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, have not been seen in public for so long, pretty much since the victory parade in Moscow on May 9th. He even skipped the day of Belarusian flag holiday, he did not make his traditional speech, and later on even the government of Russia confirmed that he indeed has a, some kind of an illness. There are even some rumors online that it might be Putin behind all this, because he wants to seize the power in Belarus for himself, so that Belarus will become an even more active ally of Russia in this war. But later on, Alexander Lukashenko showed up on public, he basically visited the headquarters of the Belarusian Air Forces, but he still did not look very happy. And later on, things became even more suspicious, because the official propaganda of Belarus released this picture of Alexander Lukashenko and said, look, he's alive and well. But to be honest, the more you look at this picture, the more unsettling it becomes. It does feel like that this is some kind of a CGI, he's just looking way too perfect. What do you think? Because, I mean, such countries will only announce the actual passing of their leader weeks after it already happened. So for this reason, if you think that there is definitely something terribly wrong is here, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see how many of us think exactly the same. You can also follow me on Instagram because I am planning a big trip around Europe and who knows, maybe I can even meet some of you guys. And the link to my Instagram is down below. Alright, and now let's briefly talk about the West and support Ukraine, and today we have some very important news. And then I'll give you a quick update from the south and the east of Ukraine, and then we'll focus more closely on Bakhmut drama. Because the Russian flanks and the lines of defenses have completely collapsed, and Ukrainians are about to enter uh, the city. And first of all, since we already talked about the president of another country, here is your literally 10 seconds update on the presidential elections in Turkey. After counting all of the ballots, as the current president of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan, has approximately 49.5% of votes, and his main opposition, Kılıç Darogolu, has approximately 45%, so there will be a second round of votes in the end of May. 
And now let's talk about the Western support. And first of all, the US confirmed that they already sent 31 Abrams tanks to Germany for Ukrainians to train on them. There are also some rumors that America has been secretly supplying Ukraine with ADM-160 missiles with the range of up to 920 kilometers. And speaking about the missiles, it is already a fact that Ukraine has storm shadow missiles from the United Kingdom with the range of approximately 300 kilometers, but it can be increased all the way to 500. And as you can see from this map, this is the potential area, the range of these missiles. But this is not the only good thing which came to us from the United Kingdom, because this summer they are also planning to start training Ukrainian pilots and they will also accelerate with their allies the supply of F-16s to Ukraine. Next I want to mention France and Italy, which recently already delivered its air defense system SMPT to Ukraine. And additionally, France in the near future will deliver dozens of armored personnel carriers and light tanks, such as AMX-10RC to Ukraine. But it is Germany that truly increased massively its support to Ukraine recently and the new military support package to Ukraine it is estimated to be at almost 2.95 billion dollars. And this will include Iris T air defense systems, murder infant combat fighting vehicles, Leopard tanks, howitzers and more than 200 armored personnel carriers. But what about Russians? Do they get some kind of military support? <laughs> well, recently we received this video that Russians are towing their, I don't know what is this, radio control toy tank called probably Platforma M, which looks like they're planning to use in Ukraine. And one of the main features of this toy tank is that it is unstoppable. <laughs> and I mean it, literally <laughs> unstoppable. <laughs> And as always, all the additional photos and videos of this military equipment and machines will be available on my Patreon, there is still one week of free access and the link is down below. But ok, now let me give you a quick update from the south and the east of Ukraine and then we'll focus more on Bakhmut. And first of all, we have a picture from one of Crimean beaches. I mean, this is how it looked like before the war and now right here is the picture after the war. <laughs> no more tourists, only dragon teeth defense fortifications and definitely no panic. Our next stop brings us to Mariupol, where as a result of a Ukrainian attack, a concentration of Russian forces of more than 50 people has been eliminated. And before I go to the east, I think it is very important to stop really quick in Bryansk, where recently several Russian aircrafts and helicopters have been intercepted. According to the Russian side, this was the Ukrainian air defense, which I don't know what Ukrainian air defense was doing on the territory of Russia, which means that most likely these were Russians who accidentally intercepted their flying machines. And as we move back to Ukraine itself, recently there has been an attack in Luhansk, which targeted one of the Russian infiltrators, Igor Kornet, whenever he was doing a haircut in the barber shop. Looks like he will not cut his hair in the near future anymore, though he survived. And as we go to the actual front lines in the east, we can see that Ukrainians were able to get very close to Kruta Balka in Avdiivka area. We even have this video of a Ukrainian FPV drone destroying the Russian Havitzer Vasilok somewhere in the eastern front lines and as always the full version will be uploaded on my Patreon, the link is down below. And just overall, in the last 24 hours, Ukrainians were able to destroy one command point of Russians, six concentration of Russian forces, four artillery systems, one air defense system and seven other important military targets. But obviously, the most important and recently successful battle in the East is happening right now in Bakhmut, where Russian flanks have completely collapsed and Ukrainians are set to enter the city in the near future and surround potentially the remaining Russians. And as you can see from this picture, the combat activities inside Bakhmut they continue every single day and the city is literally, there is nothing even left 
from the city. And one of the most important achievements of Ukrainian army recently is that they are able to destroy a Russian command post in Klishivka, eliminating senior military official. And in addition to that, Ukrainians were also able to eliminate more than 20 Russian soldiers in Klishivka and they are also able to advance a little bit closer to Kordyumivka. And in addition to that, according to Anna Malyar, Ukrainians were able to take 10, at least 10 extremely strategically important positions to the south and to the north of Bakhmut and also take some prisoners of war from Russians. And just overall, this is how the situation inside Bakhmut has been changing in the last several days. Another important achievement recently is that Ukrainians were able to establish full control of the so-called road of life, which leads from Bakhmut through Khromovy and to Chasov Yar. But as you can see from this video, the losses from both sides were extensive, which is unfortunate, but that's the cost of war. And pretty much yes, as you can see from this map, the flanks of Bakhmut from the north and from the south have already pretty much completely collapsed, even though the actual front line might be kinda still standing. But I mean, it is no wonder, because it was regular conventional Russian soldiers who were left defending the flanks, and majority of them are inexperienced fresh conscripts. We even have videos like this from Bakhmut, which show the last desperate attempt of Russia to hold the city. And such massive attacks with incendiary ammunition only confirm the fact that Russians are in total panic mode and they don't know what else to do. At the same time, almost the entire Wagner inside Bakhmut is almost completely eliminated. The professional Russian soldiers are also gone. That is why the majority of the Russian forces population inside the city right now consists of just once again unprofessional people. And this idea literally has been confirmed by the British intelligence report. And they say that in the beginning of the war, Russians had professional soldiers with brand new military equipment. And right now it's fresh and unexperienced conscripts using the museum exhibitions. So what do you think are the chances of them to resist battle hardened Ukrainian veterans who seek justice? I think you already know the answer. And these Russian soldiers, they know the answer too. And that is why one of the things they prefer to do is to simply desert and run away. Because as you can see from these statistics, the number of such desertion cases has skyrocketed recently. Which pretty much can be summarized that Putin already literally ran out of soldiers. There is no more professional ones, no one wants to sign a contract, the fresh conscripts are running away. Putin does not have anyone who wants to fight his war. But despite all this major success of Ukrainians so far, according to Mikhail Podolyak, this is just the beginning, the prelude for the actual ultimate counteroffensive of Ukrainians. He basically said that Ukrainians seizing the advantage in Bakhmut is just the beginning. This will be a huge morale boost whenever the city is liberated, and after this, the liberation will expand all the way across the east. He once again emphasized the fact that the ultimate counteroffensive is not going to be just one battle. This will be the combination of many battles. But what he's confident of is that Russians are already panicking and it will be even worse for them in the future. And so far, if Ukrainians are already able to start liberating Bakhmut, I personally think and at least hope that it will be even easier for them to liberate the other parts as well. And if you don't want to miss any of this extremely good news in the near future, can you please subscribe to my channel, it only takes one click. The best way to support my work will be through my Patreon, where you can unlock hundreds of uncensored footage every single week. You can also become my channel member, unlock channel badges and channel emojis, or just simply use a PayPal link. Everything can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you tomorrow.